In last video, we did a Premier Pro Beginner Scores giveaway, and I'm very happy to announce you that Brasley is the winner. Congratulations, Brasley. I've sent you an email. Let's get into the video. Transitions have so many purposes, but I see so many editors using them at the wrong moment. See what I did then? This destroys your edit, and it makes your content look unprofessional. Today, you'll learn four awesome transitions and how to use them correctly. Number one the extended zoom out transition. Perfect for car edits, events, or when you're changing chapters. To create this transition, we need two clips. I have one of a close-up and another one of a wheel. We're gonna take the first one and zoom out. For the second clip, we're also gonna zoom out on the clip. Then we're gonna snap them against each other and that will create this amazing zoom effect. Now, there's one big problem. We can't really zoom out the first clip because then these black gaps will appear. Now, there are a few ways you can fix this, but my favorite one is using Photoshop to artificially extend the image. Let me show you how. Move the player to the last frame of the first clip. Then click the screenshot button in the program monitor. Give it a name, for example car logo, and make sure to select TIFF as a file type. This makes sure it doesn't lose any quality. Now simply drag the picture in Photoshop and make sure it's selected in the layer panel. Then hit Ctrl plus T on your keyboard to open up the transform properties. On the top bar, set the scale to 50%. Then in the toolbar, select the marquee tool. Go to the canvas and drag a rectangle around your image. Make sure to leave a small gap on the edge. That way Photoshop knows how to fill up the emptiness. Now hit Ctrl plus Shift plus I to invert the selection because we want to fill that up. Then click on Generate a Fill and then Ungenerate. Let Photoshop do its thing and there you go. It still blows my mind. Now to export the image go to File menu on top and find Export. Then Export As. On the top right you can choose to export it as a JPEG. Then scroll all the way down and make sure Embed Color Profile is disabled. That way you keep the original color. Alright, now back to Premiere. Drag the two videos approximately 20 frames away from each other. Now grab the picture from Photoshop and drag it in between both the clips. As you can see, we have a little jump cut here. But to fix that, find the transform effect in the effects library. Then drag it on the screenshot. In the effect controls, find the transform effect and set the scale to 200. That way the jump cut will be gone. Also, now we have more than enough space to zoom out thanks to Photoshop. Set a scale keyframe on the first frame of the clip. Then move further in time and click the reset button to set the scale back to 100. Oh, and to make the zoom super smooth, extend the velocity curves and pull the lever of the first keyframe all the way to the right. That way the animation will be smooth. Also, scroll down a little and increase the shutter angle to add motion blur. Now, we're already zooming out, but the transition to the second clip isn't really that smooth. To fix that, we're gonna add a simple scale animation on the second clip as well. In the effects library, find the transform effect again and drag it on the second clip. Then head over to the effect controls and move the player to the first frame of the clip. Find the scale property and increase it to 200. Then grab the player again and move it all the way to the right. Now just click the reset button, that will put it back to 100. Next, expand the velocity curves again and pull the lever of the second keyframe to make the animation end smoothly. Again on the bottom, increase the shutter angle and that's all to it. That looks amazing. Transition number two is perfect for music videos. These are two clips of a dancer. We're gonna let the second dancer appear in the first clip like this. To do that, duplicate the second clip by holding down Alt and dragging it one track up. Then move the player to the first frame of the clip and right click it. Find the Add Frame Hold option. This will freeze the entire clip. Drag it on top of the first clip for about 20 frames. Now make sure the clip is selected and go to the effect controls. Find Opacity and select the pen tool. We're gonna draw a mask around the dancer in the program it. The more precise the mask is, the better the result. Take your time for this because it's only one frame long. Once you're done, go back to the timeline. It's time to create a flickering effect. Trim the clip so that it's only one frame long. Now we're gonna add Gaussian Blur to this clip, but if we do that directly, the blur will only work inside the mask, which, which doesn't work. To fix that, right click the clip and find Nest. Then click it. In this window, call it Dancer or something. Hit OK and move to the effects library. Find the Gaussian Blur effect and drag it on the nested sequence. Now in the effect controls, increase the blur until the dancer is barely visible. As you can see, the blur now works on the entire frame instead of just the mask. Now go back to the timeline and duplicate the nest by holding down Alt and dragging it one frame further. Now select the second one and in the effect controls decrease the blur so that the dancer becomes a little more visible. Then go back to the timeline and keep doing that until the dancer is completely visible. When you're done you should have something like this. That looks amazing. Perfect. Now last week we basically gave away the complete Cinecom bundle to you guys for Black Friday. Now. Unfortunately, the 94% discount has been extended for a week, so you guys can continue stealing from us. Just kidding, but once you have the Cinecom bundle, you'll get all the courses and packs we've ever created for the rest of your life. And all the future courses and packs that we will ever create will be added to your My Cinecom account. 
for free. Normally this will cost you $3,150, but now it's only $197. Oh, and on top of that, you'll also get a year of free audio pro, which normally costs $200. The deal is almost gone and will never come back. So use the code almost gone at checkout. So click the link below to become the best video editing version of yourself. Now let's create a hidden cut transition. This one is used a lot in movies to hide cuts because most people don't even see the transition. A great example is the movie 1970. Take a look at this shot for example. You can clearly see that they used a mask right here to transition into the second shot. Now let's try and recreate this. These are two shots of a man walking on the beach. In this shot we don't have a tree to create a mask on but we do have a sun umbrella or whatever it's called in English. Now simply drag the first clip one track higher and let it overlap with the second one. Now make sure the playhead is on the frame where the pole starts appearing. In the timeline make sure the clip with the pole is selected. Now head over to the effect controls and find opacity. Click the pen tool to create a mask and go to the program monitor. Now simply click to add points around the pole and all the way around the shot. In the effect controls, click the mask pad stopwatch to create a keyframe. Then in the program monitor, you can use the scroll wheel to move a few frames further in time. Simply adjust the mask and again, move further in time. Adjust the mask again and keep doing that until the first shot is completely gone. When it's done, you'll get something like this. That looks really cool. Number four, a dreaming transition. This one works very well when you're switching shots, for example, from someone sleeping into a dream of that person. Do that, drag both clips against each other. Then head over to the project window and click the new item button. Find adjustment layer and it will then appear right here. Now drag it in the timeline on top of both your clips. To go into the dream, go to the effect controls and find the Lumetri color effect. Drag it on the adjustment layer. Now head over to the effect controls and find the exposure property. We're gonna animate it to create a bright flash. To do that, move the playhead to the point in between the two clips. Then set an exposure keyframe and increase it until the screen is white. Then with the playhead, move back in time and click the reset button to set the exposure back to zero. Then go back to the playhead and move further in time. Now again, set the exposure to zero. Oh, and don't forget to right click the first keyframe and choose ease out. Then right click the second one and choose ease in. This makes the animation super smooth. Next, find the Gaussian blur effect and drag it underneath the Lumetri color. Move the playhead to the first Lumetri keyframe and then go to the Gaussian blur effect. Click the stopwatch icon to set a keyframe. Now move to the second Lumetri keyframe and go back to blurriness. Increase it a bunch and move the playhead further in time again. Set the blurriness back to zero by clicking the reset button. Again, don't forget to ease the keyframes. Now it's time to finish off the effect. Find the turbulent displace and drag it underneath all the effects. First set the amount to zero, then set a keyframe and head over to the playhead. Move to the middle of the animation and increase the amount to something around 90. Then grab the playhead again and move to the end of the effect. Set the amount back to zero. Ease the keyframes and there you go. That looks amazing. And since we've used an adjustment layer, you can actually drag it over any clip and the transition will just work. These effects are really cool, but I actually tried editing on a 30 year old Premiere. So to learn some fun facts about Premiere and a little bit of history, click the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, stay creative.